Hello and welcome to CLK Creates. I'm CLK, Candice Kitchen, and welcome to my channel. Uh, talking about my crafting journey, which usually involves quilting, knitting, crochet, cross stitch, and a little bit more. So welcome. And I wanna thank all that have subscribed and for coming back and welcome to all those that are new. Uh, sorry for the delay in putting out this podcast or this episode. Uh, life just seems to happen. The one Sunday I was going to record, I ended up with one of those uh, tension weather headaches. The barometer was up high and ooh, it was a doozy. I didn't do any crafting at all. I didn't even knit. Normally, at least once a day, I knit in the evening sitting down, relaxing, but I didn't even do that. I couldn't. I was, I watched fun movies. I watched Sing 2 and some other movies I can't remember, but things that were happy movies because I was not feeling the best. But it was just a tension headache the very next day. I felt better. So yeah, I didn't catch it on time. Uh, so the next Sunday I was going to record. So I don't know if I mix it up on days. Well, it's whenever I'm available. But the last time I was going to record, my husband was getting ready for a business trip. So et cetera, et cetera, interrupted the whole flow of the day. And yeah, so anyways, here I am. <laughs> here I am today here in Ontario. I live in Shelburne, Ontario, Canada. And today is a family day. So it's Monday, February 17th, I believe. No, 20th. My goodness, I'm days away. Uh, February 20th. And it's our our family day, which is a stat holiday. So statutory holiday for us here in Ontario. I'm not sure all provinces don't recognize this as a statutory holiday, but I don't know, I know Ontario does, so an extra long weekend. <laughs> Alright, so let's just jump into it since I have plenty to share with you today. So one, the quilt behind me is one of my absolute favorites, favorite, favorite, favorites. It's a throw. It's only throw size. Um, way back when I had my quilting studio where I used to teach quilting classes, quilting and sewing classes. Um, this was one of the classes and it was a book. I'll show you the book in a minute that had we pick different fat quarters and the whole book is taking fat quarters, chopping it up in a certain way and then developing lovely quilts with it. So um, this was one of my favorites and I think for sure I'm going to make another one, but like a big bed size one eventually. Um, but what I've done is I've done the quilt top, which, you know, you see in front of you, just the quilter's cotton. And then I didn't sandwich anything in between. I had polar fleece. Uh, as the backing so super soft and cozy and just a, a white or cream let me see there you go and I quilted it myself on a friend's quilting machine I believe yeah I'm pretty sure I did it on her long arm machine and I just did a meander all around it um yeah I love this quilt it's, it's my favorite one to have on the sofa um, the colors just are so bright and, and I just love them. They're my favorites. So, um, the book it came from is Fat Quarter Style by 12 Quilts That Never Go Out of Style. I have to agree. And it's by It's So Emma Patterns. She's prolific as far as designs. And in the book... Their picture doesn't do it justice. Mine kind of is a little bit better. There are like, oh my goodness, at least out of the 12, I think eight quilts I want to do out of here. Um, so I'll fold that over. There we go. So there's an example of what they have in the book. And it's called Tapestry. The, the quilt name is called Tapestry. And, oh, so in it, I'm not showing it to you, but in it they show you like your fat quarter, which is usually 18 by 22 inches. And they show you in that thing how to block, cut it up 
uh, exactly so that you get the perfect amount for each of these blocks and um, there's no waste and well you have a little bit extra but um, it's a very efficient way of showing you how to cut it so I really like that it was great for when I was teaching classes and they come with um, fabric requirements and cutting sizes for uh, crib lap twin and queen so lots of choices as far as what to make with this um, oh, yeah I love it I absolutely love it um, here in the front they have another little picture of some of the other ones so so this is tapestry which I did I want to do this one with the navy background for sure I love this one and this one I'm not so sure I think if you pick different colorways, I'd enjoy it more. But there's lots in here. So, back quarter style by That's So Emma. And uh, tapestry. That's the quilt. I can't remember the name of the fabric, the fabric line. There's no way I'll remember that. Um, nope. But I love it. It was from a while ago. Doubt you'll be able to get anything from it. Unless you go to like... You know, certain quilt shops that have, you know, lots of bolts of fabric. Sometimes I'll have some left over. This one is one of my favorites. This gray one with the turquoise. So pretty. So pretty. Okay. So, what I'm wearing. So, it is a finished project. <laughs> a finished knitting project. But it's going to be on the whip pile again. And I'll explain why. So this is my granito. I call it the purple granito. And it's by Hohi Locatelli. So I'll put what the pattern's supposed to look like here. Um, you know, I like to pop up visuals for you. Um, I did it in Cascade Heritage, uh, color number 5705, which is a, mm, a pearly looking mauve, like a deep mauve. I love it. I love it. The minute I saw it in the shop, I was like, oh, I have to make something with that one. So, um, so yeah, so I did make something. The only thing I'm not happy with is the pockets. So here's a picture of my pockets and I'll show you. They're just droopy and bulgy and I did everything correct. And I just, I cannot stand the pockets. <laughs> I would never use them. It was just a design feature, but it's not a good design feature if they're bugging me, right? So, I am going to take it apart to just above where I separated for the pockets. And I will then continue to knit down just the regular with this kind of detail that it has on it. So the, the spine detail on either side. And it's on the back as well. And I'll just continue that all the way down, do my ribbing and be happy with it. So I wore it today so that you knew it was actually a finished project and it is, and I love it. It feels great, it's so soft, but those pockets, I can't deal with those pockets. So this will be on the whip pile again, but I do, I really, really love how it turned out other than that part. <laughs> other than that part. All right, so on my last episode, I had discussed my crafting plans. I'm gonna put my glasses on because I have to refer to my notes and stuff. It's, you know, they always say, oh, I'm out of practice if you haven't been doing a podcast for a little bit. You really do <laughs> get a little um, off, but that's okay. We'll work through it, right? We'll work through it. <laughs> so my last episode, I had discussed my crafting plans for my top five knitting and cross stitch whips I'd like to try and either get done or make some really good headway on so top five knitting top five cross stitch and then I also um and so out of the top five knitting um three of my knitting whips are well under its underway and I will be showing those today to you um and I'm really, really happy with the progress I've made so far. Um, a couple, 
well of them I'll be pretty close by next month to have a finish I think so yay <laughs> um my five cross stitch whips ha haven't been on my radar lately uh I have a couple here to show you um today I did a little bit but because I've been working extra hours at the shop at the wool shop wool and silk co here in Shelburne um I haven't had as much energy and time to really it's eye power eye and concentration if I don't have my eyes feel tired and I just can't concentrate cross stitch is not the best thing because I had to already the frog visited so I'll show you that on one of my projects um but yeah so I gravitate to knitting because a lot of times I don't have to think I'm I'll pick a pattern that I don't have to think about what I'm doing and just go around 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 so those in the evenings a lot of times are the ones that I do pick up but I love cross stitching so I have to try and find more time so what's happening is um say on the weekends when I do have the time to cross stitch during the day I'm sewing so I'm doing a lot of sewing for work uh, sewing and cutting and I'll talk more about that in a minute um, so uh, I've made little bits of progress and as far as all my top five I gave told you top five starts that I wanted to do in both knitting and cross stitch on my last episode for my quasi 2023 plans I haven't started any of those because I have plenty of whips that I really want to get done. So I'm trying to concentrate on those right now. But what I did do is for three, yeah, three of the five knitting projects, I swatched and uh, am ready to go. Everything's all in its bags. And so when I'm ready to start, I can just jump in and start it. I'm thinking one day, in a month or so, I might just do a start day because <laughs> I'm crazy like that but yeah if I do a start day start each of them yeah who knows we'll see we will see but um I'll, I'll get those started soon I'm looking forward to it all right so we're gonna jump into finishes uh for what I've done in the last little while since we saw each other so if you recall, I did for myself and my son Rowan a uh, knitting sock tube or sock snake, I used to call it. Um, I don't have it anymore because I cut it all up. I have it here in my one of my small drawstring bags. Uh, I have two socks finished for Rowan. So these are them. So I did afterthought everything on this. And I, I'll show you later. I have one that I'm doing for a friend who knit a sock. Sock snake. And I told her I would do her afterthought everything. So. There it is. All finished. So the sock tube. It was Lang Super Sock. Madrid. Color Madrid and um, I haven't blocked them yet I haven't done anything and Ro Rowan hasn't been able to wear them yet because I said you have to wait till I show it on the podcast so he's been waiting a bit and he's anxious to have them which is nice <laughs> but uh, the heel toe and cuff are done with Fabel drops F Fabel or Fable and it's color 300, so a nice brown tone that picks up the brown in all of these stripes. So I'm really happy with how that turned out. You got your cuff, uh, your afterthought heel. And what an afterthought heel is, it's like exactly like the toe, right? So, and then there's the toe. And you just cut in so 
the time that I talked about this, I had put a link for um, an afterthought everything kind of scenario. I'll put that link down below again, but um, it's by Pip and Pin, the one that I sort of followed. Um, but yeah, I love how they turned out. I made his nice and long. He likes them long. And uh, yeah, all done. So now I get to block these for him and uh, <laughs> let him wear them finally. He's been, he's been patient, so that's good. So that's whip number one. Um, the other one was, we talked about already, was my purple granito. So yeah, I'm really, really happy with this. Very comfortable. Not wearing it with the appropriate bottoms today. It's just my <laughs> capris on the bottom because it's warm. <laughs> but um, yeah, that's fine. Very comfy though. The other one is tassels in the sky. So this is in my... I know it doesn't apply because it's not crochet, but I have hook it up, knit it up in the shop bags in both mm, smaller, uh, like sock size and then shawl size. This is shawl, shawl size, um, considered, I think, large on my website. Uh, linen and then I hand embroider all these. So, yeah. So those are down in my shop. But anyhow, in my bag is my tassels in the sky. So here is a picture of what um, what it uh, it looks like in the pattern. I haven't blocked mine yet, and so I bought this yarn at um, Little Red Mitten. Oh my goodness, my brain! So it was Full Moon Fibers slub and it was the moon rock slub in lagoon color lagoon held together with concept by Kat katya and it's at etnia at etna so it was the this stuff so here's my ball of the slub here is what i held it together with instead of mohair because I can't do mohair. Ugh. It just <laughs> feels like little stabbing fairy knives. I don't know. It's just, it, it, I don't like it. So this is 90% superwash merino and 10% nylon, the, the slub. And the Etna is 42% virgin wool, 40% cotton, and 18% cashmere. So I can do cashmere. Of course I can do cashmere, so... <laughs> So, without further ado, let me just show you it. So, get the right side. I have not blocked this yet. I haven't had the time or the space to like really hold it out, but oh, I gotta hurry up and do it so I can wear it. But isn't that nice? Let's show you up close. And you get that nice little bit of halo. It softens the color up just ever so slightly. And so you have your three tassels. So the pattern's a free pattern. And then you make your tassels first, have them off to the side, and then you knit this until you have not much left. So I didn't want to, this one had a lot less, so I didn't want to get caught in bind off. But that's all I have from the two uh, skeins that I had of this stuff. So pretty darn good, not too much waste, but Oh, I, I just love it. It's going to drape a lot better once I block it. Oh, there we go. Isn't that sweet? Oh, my gosh. Springtime with, uh, with my jean jacket and a sweater. It goes nice with the sweater, too, doesn't it? <laughs> yeah. Oh it, it's, oh, it feels so nice. It feels really good. So it'll feel even better when I block it. But that is the tassels in the sky. And this one was like a beautiful no-brainer when you're knitting it. It's just, yeah, I'd be tempted to do another one. Not necessarily holding. I don't 
like if I just had like a really nice skein that I really liked. Um, yeah, it's not a bad idea. Whether it's a bulkier weight or lighter weight, doesn't matter. But um, yeah, I think I might do that. That I really like the skein, all the detail. I don't. I don't need the fuzz. I. I a lot of times, like the ranunculus or the love note. Those are patterns where you hold um, fingering weight with the mohair or whatever, which I won't do. And uh, I just do it straight up DK or whatever the weight is, and uh, without the fuzz. I don't need it. I just don't need it. But that's fine. <laughs> to each his own, right? To each his own. I can't handle it. It's just. <sighs> So the la next one I finished, um, so I watch the Bakery Bears and I'm also a Patreon member. So for Christmas, like the month of December, uh, Kay Jones designed an advent pattern for us to follow. And at first it was a surprise, la la la. I've discussed this on here before and showed you it in bits and pieces, but I fully finished it after Christmas because I ended up sick just before Christmas and didn't get it done so it is done now but not blocked because again I haven't had time to do any of that stuff but here it is all in its glory and my sock bloggers won't help for this one but this is a nice big stocking and each day we had like a little segment to do um it was every other day that we had the, the patterns come out. And each of these had a certain meaning, um, an idea for why she did it. But yeah, so I did mine all in either vintage and Estelle. Uh, I'll put it all below, or I'll just put it right here on the screen. Um, in DK weight, I know the red is the Estelle. And I'll put the numbers, I think. The green is a style. I think the white is vintage, Barocco vintage, DK. But, uh, or maybe they're all a style. I can't really remember. Anyways, it turned out great. It turned out really nice. I really like it. I'm going to block that, put it away with my Christmas stuff, and, uh, display it next year. I'm not going to put anything in it, obviously. It's just going to be for display. Some people were doing multiple ones in either different colors or different color combinations of the same color, like in the lines to um, have for each family member. I don't think I'm going to do that. I, I don't repeat patterns too often for knitting because there's just so much out there that I want to do. Yeah, who knows? We'll see down the line. But uh, as of right now, that's it for that one. And I'm happy how it turned out. It was fun. It was a fun one to do. Each, each, every other day, we were finding the new clue, and she did a little video and talked about it and um, read part of uh, a Christmas, not a Christmas story. What's the Charles Dickinson <sighs> book? classic book about Christmas. I think it is. Christmas story? I don't know. Anyways, it was fun. It was fun to do. It's a nice, they give you a lot for a Patreon, um, Patreon kind of, uh, member kind of thing. They, they offer a lot, the bakery bears. So if you're into knitting, uh, check them out because it's, it's kind of worth it. So my cross stitch finish. So Caroline from Off the Grid Needle Arts and Evertote had a finish up weekend where on the weekend we just post on, on the Friday Off the Grid Facebook page and we just uh, stated, okay, I want to try and have a page finish or, you know, I want to finish this section or I want to have a fully finish. So I did it a couple a few weekends ago and I got something done cross stitch so from cross stitch obsession it's the cafe terrace by van gogh so these are part of my minis and I did show this before so here's what it would look like and all the information 
for the where you can get it. I got it off of Etsy. So this is Tiny Cafe Terrace. And here it is all done. Oh my gosh, it's so cute. <laughs> oh, I love it. Yeah, got it all done. I think I only had one oopsie in there, which is pretty good. And the oopsie was somewhere in here, so you can't tell because that's cobblestone walk. Cobblestone road or walkway or whatever. But isn't it sweet? I love it. You're not going to see the back. The back is disgusting. But uh, yeah, so as of right now, that's three, one, two, three of these mini master pieces um, complete. So yeah, I have to just keep going. Once I have a good bunch, then I'll start fully finishing them into frames and stuff. But I have to fully finish Rowan's... Um, Calcifer, the little fire guy, the picture here. And then I also have to finish mine and my husband's. I got the frame and everything. Uh, how sweet it is to be loved by you. I finished that and I have to put that onto the frame. I'm going to frame it myself. I can do it. If it's a little crooked, I'm fine with that too. It's only for us. <laughs> None of us care. We're good. <laughs> oh my goodness. So, okay, so now we're on to whips. So, um, I seem to be talking really fast. See, I'm out of practice. But, uh, yeah. So, the first knitting whip is my elf mail. So, then another one of my little denim, large denim <gasps> zipper totes. So, this one is done with the Loving Path yarn. And she has this exact one. She was wearing it at the Woolstock Fiber Festival back in September. And I was like, I have to have that. That exactly. So I got the last two. So I'm a little nervous because the yarn quantities for this one, which is Courage, is exactly to what I need so I'm I'm worried <laughs> so I, I spoke with Deb Debbie and she said that let her know well hopefully I'll be okay and then her and I will be twinsies at um, Montreal Knit City Knit City Montreal but I'll talk about that more later so uh, this is the loving path high twist sock line 75% superwash merino 25% nylon this color is called courage every time i say it i want to sing the tragically hip song courage but i'll save you all from that and the other one is called wild child mm, i love it and the pattern is is it danny miga yeah the pattern is called elf mail by danny miga I'll put it right down here below but I'm making excellent progress so we've got separation for sleeves we've got sleeves because I, I, I I'm gonna go to the very end and see how it goes so I'm gonna go 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 on this pattern oh, I just love it I can't wait to wear this it feels fantastic Look, that's going to look awesome. And it's very lightweight. <laughs> Anyways, I can't wait to finish this. So as you can see, I'm about mm, two, two and a half inches past the separation of sleeves. And I'm just going to go, 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 go. See how far I get with this. And um, then do the ribbing at the bottom. And hopefully I'll make it. I'm hoping. Because these little balls, when they're caked, are very deceiving. You think, oh my gosh, that's not going to finish it. And then you keep going and you keep going. And it doesn't seem to change too much in size. And you think, oh, maybe. And sometimes you play yarn chicken and other times you are you make it. So I'm hoping. Because it's a cropped style. We'll see. But anyways, 
hopefully by the next time I podcast, I'll have tried it on. I'll be close to where I want to finish and I'll have, I'll try it on before I start doing for the binding. But if I could make it, oh, I'm looking forward to wearing this. I will wear this like crazy. I know I will. I just love it. So I'm already planning for um, another one. But I'm going to do a long sleeve version. So on the pattern, she has for short sleeves and long sleeve. And I'm going to do a long sleeve version. Also a little bit longer. So, um, so I'll have two versions of it. Not exactly the same. And I'm thinking of doing like a black tonal up here and maybe something more purpley like this maybe so so yeah stay tuned <laughs> stay tuned I have lots of uh, trips planned for yarny goodness so who knows maybe I'll find something at one of those places okay so the next one I was going to show you was my Fair Isle Vest uh, by Mary Mucklestone. And I am eight rows to start kind of the sleeve markers or the, it's a vest. So the openings, because uh, you go around, 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 and then I put in steaks. So I steak both armholes and the V-neck. Um, I'll just put in a picture. It's easier. There you go. Put in a picture because I think the one I have is like this on paper. And um, so yeah, so this is mine. I've shown this before. So I've made great progress on it. I'm very excited. So I'm on the second repeat of everything. So this is, I'm about here on the second repeat. Just finish the red line. And then I go up and then so I think it's around here in this solid part is where um, I start setting up for the steaks. So excited. So excited. So hopefully I will have a finish in a month or two. But the goal is to have this for sure finished by September when I go to uh, Shetland. I'm sorry, I'm getting all kinds of notifications. I think one of our, yeah, one of our, we have two babies coming, two grandbabies for friends of mine in my knitting pa posse. So it looks like one hatched today. So I'll get all the information later, but yay. <laughs> New babies. So yeah, so that's the Mary Mucklestone vest. I, um, yeah, it has to be ready by September, end of September, which it will. It'll be done. I, I've gotten my Colorwork Mojo back, so that's important because for a while I didn't have, I didn't have the Colorwork Mojo and I just wasn't driven to working on it. And now it's a battle between the Colorwork and the Elf Mail and both need to be done. But Elf Mail I want done by... May long weekend. So yeah, we'll talk more about that later. And then my other knitting whip that I'm working on and have to have done the same time as the vest is my Kuka Bray. Oh, I always say it wrong. Cockatoo Bray <laughs> um, cardigan. So it'll look like this. It's by Kate Davies. And I'm doing it in Shetland, Jameson and Smith, two-ply yarn from Shetland. And um, I have two sleeves done. This is the yarn of the body. I don't have any of the other colors in here yet. But that's the, the brand. And this... This brown, like it has flecks of blue, red, yellow. It's just, let's see if you can see it there. You can see quite a bit there. Look at all the different flecks of color in that. 
it's just, it's really pretty. It feels scratchy as you're working with it, but not too scratchy. I'll always have something underneath it. But when this stuff wash, when you block it, it blooms and it feels much softer. So it's going to be really nice. So I have two sleeves fully done. <sighs> so two sleeves all ready to go. Yep. And I've started on the body. So I did the ribbing. And now I'm on to the actual body part. And then there's like decreases. So yeah, I'm I'm moving right along on this. I haven't touched it in a week or two, but I've been concentrating on elf now. But yeah, I can't wait to get up to that color work. It's taking forever. This is also one that I have to steek up the front. Um the armholes no because I already have the arms. So you steek all the way up. And then I separate the sleeves or add the sleeves and then continue on. And then I still have the steak. So it's a whole process. But yeah, not much done on the body, but the sleeves are done. So I won't have a uh, sleeve island. And uh, yeah, this is going really good. So this shouldn't take me too long because especially this part is just following the... Uh, decreases and all that kind of stuff so I just have to watch and make sure that I get it off this is one of my large drawstring bags I'm pretty sure I have some of these in the shop in this actual fabric but uh yeah so those are my knitting whips cross stitch whips um I have my forever and ever let me just get them up here if I just do this oh I almost fell <laughs> if I just do this now okay so the first one I have listed on my little handy dandy list and I'm not taking it out of the the things I just you know I'm just not right <laughs> so this is forever and ever a celebration of love by Brenda Gervais or with thy needle and thread and that's what it's going to look like. I've started down here in this corner. I'm going to change the wording down here to reflect as a commemorative thing to my mom who passed away almost two years ago, which is hard to believe. Um, but uh, yeah, so I haven't figured that out yet. I have to chart it and see how I actually want to word it. I haven't decided, but I have loads of time till I get there. And this is where I'm at. So let me go try to get it a little closer. I can't see. There we go. So there you go. I started on the grass in front of the house and mostly worked on the border and that one tree. So I am doing this on, is it 32 or 36? Oh, I left that bag downstairs. I can't remember. I'll write it down here what I'm doing, what fabric I'm doing it on. Um, it's all called for, um, all called for floss except for one. I couldn't get it, but I found something that worked well and I'm using that. So instead of, I can't even remember. I'll show you next time because this will be a project that's going for a while. So if you look, where am I up close? Uh, the house, I can't see. So for the house, I'm on the grass of the house. So I'm very excited to get cracking on the house. It's got cute little flowers in front and yeah. So this one was going well. Um, it was called for in January for my whip go and I worked on it probably two or three, three, three good sessions. So I did, I got a lot done on, um, the border. 
the border was the main thing. There was lots of color changes and then stops and starts so that you don't travel the darker floss color underneath and la 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 la. So I got my needle here all ready for the next one because I was going to do more. But that's where I'm at with that. Forever and Ever by Brenda Gervin. So really pleased with that. That's going to be a long going project. The other whip I worked on, and it was called for my February uh, whip go board, um, the Modern Folk Embroidery 2020 Sal, a family patchwork sampler. So this is essentially what it's going to look like when it's finished. And this was one where he gave it out month by month. So the whole top is done. And this, yeah, this house is complete. And I'm working this way. So it was January, February, March, April, May. I'm working on June right now, right in the center. And I had to frog. Things didn't line up. I was like, oh man. So I'm still kind of fixing that. Ugh. See this coloring over here? This was from that, um, those hoops with the uh, stretchy brown. I don't know, the one I got just made marks all over the place, see? That's the back. So I'm gonna have to wash those off somehow. But I'll do it. It's fine. I'm not worried. But um, yeah, I had a frog. You can see the kind of line there. Uh, it just didn't line up with the other one. So I took it apart and then I'll fix it. But I finished the rest of May and then now I'm working over into June. So was making good progress. But uh, anyways, I still did, did quite a bit. I finished like that tree and all that kind of stuff and all these little doodaddies in here, the dog, all that. So they were this part of June, but I finished the rest of the half for May. So it would be nice. To, I, I really would like to have this finished by the end of the year. This is definitely when I have this on my whip go board like five six times four or five i can't remember quite a bit because i'd like to get it done 2020 right it's been been around for a while so it's done on ada and i'll write down here what i used it's just a uh dmc floss uh for the whole color it's all monochromatic so the other one, which I haven't started yet because I had to wait. Well, I decided to late what color of linen I wanted and the coordinating for me, floss, blah, 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 from Evertote. Uh, I used Leo and Rock, well, formerly known as Leo and Roxy Flasco has been rebranded to Roxy Flosco and uh, she has new labels and logo out. So super excited for Carrie on that. They look awesome. But uh, yeah, so I definitely wanted to, well, first of all, it's the Modern Folk Embroidery <laughs> 2023 Sal. And this year he's giving it all out at once. And we'll just follow along. He's broken it down by month, but we got it the booklet all together. And lots of people have started and it looks awesome. Um, I'm sure there's a hashtag. Uh, I'll find it and put it here. Um, I just seem to get posts of it and I, I check them out. They look fantastic. Um, but I haven't started because I waited too long to decide. Then Christmas happened. La, la, la. Anyways, I got it sometime mid-January. My linen and floss. And I still have yet to start. But I got everything all prepped and ready. So this is my fabric. 
already on the scroll rods, as you see. So this is uh, Roxy Flosco 40 count linen in color catnap. So I have catnap here and I am doing it with um, Leo and Ro uh, Roxy Flosco in Earl Grey and chalkboard. So, ugh, I will do like that. So those will be on it. I think it's gonna look awesome. And then here is what the project will look like. So it's a, a mammoth project and it's with two colors. Um, yeah, what can I say? Jacob is a, he's an excellent designer. He, uh, he sings to my heart as far as designs and balance and the whole bit. I just, I really love it. So these are going to be my two colors on this floss, on this linen. And I'm looking forward to starting this. So maybe next weekend, I'll give it a go. Or maybe sometime this week. I don't know, this week is looking a little crazy. So we shall see, but yeah, it's so pretty. And I'm so behind. Like a lot of people are up to date. Some have already finished February's marker. <sighs> Anyways, it's fine. I, I'll get it done when I get it done. <laughs> I'm not too worried. Um, okay, so just a little life update. So I've been pretty busy sewing. And I've been sewing up cross stitch bags. I haven't posted any yet. I'm um, still working out kind of my basic measurements to make sure that uh, a full Q snap will fit in all set up. Um, so yeah, so I'm going to be making a bunch of cross stitch bags. So stay tuned for that. Uh, I'm allowed now to announce that I will be one of the vendors at Stitch North on the second weekend. So that's the first weekend in May. I'll put the date down below because I can't think right now. But um, yeah, so I'm very excited about that. I Stitch North this year is, because it was very popular, is um, set up for two different weekends. So there's the April weekend, which is the last weekend in April, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and the first weekend in May, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. So I am going to the April one as myself, <laughs> as me. Candace Kitchen, stitching away and enjoying um, all the stitchy goodness with everybody. Um, the second one, though, I will be there as I can so make that. So I'm looking forward to it. So I'm getting a bunch of um, uh, cross stitch bags and other organizing things for uh, cross stitchers because that's my little thing. I like to um, help organize your crafts. So, uh, some fun things will be coming down the pipe for that. And also for the swag bags that Evertoe gives out at the Stitch North, I am making some cute little things to go into the swag bags from me. So busy, busy, busy sewing all that stuff. So I'm very excited for both weekends. Um, uh, the weekend that I'm going, a lot of my uh, stitchy friends that were at my table last year are going to be coming on the same weekend. So yeah, so hopefully we all sit together and we have a lot more giggles. Because <laughs> man, did we, we had, a, we had a good time. It was fun. Um, so I will be doing a little bit more sewing in the next little while as opposed to crafting when I'm not working the extra shifts at Wool and Silk. So uh, I'll still craft in the evenings, so you'll, it'll just be less progress, that's all. Yeah, I still relax in the evenings and put all my heat apparatuses everywhere. <laughs> uh, aging, it's not fun. 
but most of the time it's knitting because of brain function. So anyhow, that's that. Uh, all my travel uh, accommodations and tickets and all that stuff for Scotland for Shetland Wool Week um, is booked. It's all booked and ready to go. We're so excited. Um, we're leaving September 18th, coming back 18 days later. I don't even know what the date is. I can't remember. I'm so bad for numbers, like so bad. I swear I have number dyslexia sometimes, I think. But anyhow, um, looking forward to that. Um, we're just waiting for them to announce when tickets for going to Wool Week will be up and available um, for sale and also the classes like workshops and stuff because I definitely want to take the belt knitting class. It's a different technique. It'd be fun and interesting. So um, that's something new to me. I've never done it. So other knitting techniques like Fair Isle, obviously I know how to do that. Steaking, I know how to do that. So I'm not going to take those kind of classes. But um, yeah, so we're waiting for those to kind of pop up. So we can sign up and looking forward to that. So every year what they do is they, at Shetland Wool Week, they have a spotlight designer that they pick who designs the Fair Isle colorwork hat for that year. So last year's um, for 2022, uh, I didn't look it up beforehand, but I'll, I'll put it down here who the designer was for the Bonnie, I think it's the Bonnie Isle hat. Yeah, Bonnie Isle hat by Linda Shearer. And so it's a free download. So I downloaded that hat pattern for now because we don't have the new one yet. I figured having multiple Fair Isle hats is not a bad idea. So I went to a local um, sort of yarn weaving spinning shop, but it's a farm. And so they also have their own uh, yarn line as well as Camilla Farms. Uh, I'll put it down here and I'll have the link below because she also has a online store where you can order and have stuff shipped lovely lovely lady and um so that's where i went and got the shetland spindrift for this hat so i'm going to show you that now so the hat i'm going to put a picture up here what the hat looks like from last year's shetland wool week because uh my printout is only a little blurb there's only a little teeny tiny bit so i only needed five colors I have six here because I'm not sure how I'm gonna go this will definitely be my main and then I have let's do it like this we'll drop that one I couldn't decide when I was there and I figured well I'll use it anyways so those are my colors there that I'll blend into that hat Isn't that nice? I like these colors. And more than likely, like I'm gonna have like a puffer vest, um, my puffer vest, which is black. Um, I'm gonna get like a rain, hmm, like breathable rain resistant. I'm gonna go to Mountain Equipment Co-op and get something really snazzy and comfortable um, for, cause it's wet, windy, <laughs> all that stuff on Shetland especially during that time in the fall so uh even if I get a navy or a black one they will they will go but these are my colors so I'll tell you the color numbers really quick if you like so oh there's names too so this is all Jameson's Shetland Spindrift is the brand and line so this one is called Color number 122, granite. Oh, that's my dog in the background. <laughs> the next one is color 323, cardinal. Most definitely. I'm sure for you, like right now it looks red and cardinal color. It's going to look fuchsia. 
Uh, I don't know how to adjust that. Um, cause it's not till after <laughs> I post it that it's a funny color. Anyhow, this is 258 Peacock. Definitely looks like a peacock color. This one is 123 Oxford. Oh, my tummy is grumbling. I haven't had lunch, nor really a breakfast. Color 304 White. Yep. More like an ivory, but anyways. And 259 <laughs> Leprechaun. So, yeah, I love this green. I love that pop of green. So those are all my colors for my hat. So I'm going to probably get that started fairly soon. Because then the other one will come out. And then I'll be like, ah! So, <laughs> I won't be like that, but anyways. Um, other than that, um, very excited about Shetland. Like, super excited. So, Yeah. I know this year will go fast. I don't want to wish it away, but I'm very excited for that one. But even more excited also is um, the other plan we have tra planned, trip planned, is well underway for booking, is Knit City Montreal. So I am going with a bunch of my uh, knit knitting posse. <laughs> All we do when we get together is laugh, laugh, laugh. So Knit City Montreal is on our May long weekend. Again, numbers. I think it's somewhere around the 22nd. I don't know. Anyways, I'll write it down here. The exact dates of the thing. Um, so I'll be going with the posse. And we're going to go by train. So from, you know, Toronto, Ontario to Montreal, Quebec on the train. So I think it's about a seven hour five, seven hour, I can't remember, uh, trip on the train. So that car, train car is going to be loud. <laughs> I, I tell you, I, we get together quite often and we just, the laughing that goes on, some inappropriate comments and chit chat goes on as well, but lots and lots of giggles will be had. So very excited about that. Yeah, we were supposed to go, well, when the first uh, lockdown happened. It was that week. It uh, shut everything down and it got cancelled. So last year they had Knit City Montreal and it um, it went well uh, because of all still the COVID stuff. They had it where you had timed tickets where you can certain times when you were allowed to go to the marketplace and all that stuff and I was like mm, no we'll wait until we can go up and down whenever we want because we are staying in the hotel where the actual venue is you know we're gonna just do our own thing have a great time so really looking forward to that so with all these trips and stuff um I'll I'll be bringing you along. I'll do little vlog things. I'll try out vlogging a little bit and insert those into these episodes. Um, so it's like you joined us with all our little silly travels. But I'm, it's going to be a good year. Expensive year, <laughs> but good year. You know, life is short. You gotta, you gotta roll with it if you can, right? So on that note, I think I'm done. Um, Oh, you probably, I keep forgetting about it. Everyone kind of goes, oh my, when they see me. I've gone back to straight. <laughs> it's been a very long time since I've had, like, my 20s and 30s. Uh, when we moved back here from Baltimore, I noticed I was having a little bit more curl in my roots because I didn't have time with my young kids and my husband's travel trips, uh, business trips, um, to go get it relaxed and I tried out the curls and then I thought for a bit I'm like how long have I gone naturally curly and it was 13 years I did not realize it was that long yeah so I was like you know what I prefer it straight I'm just gonna do it so I did it and here we are I need to go back to the hairdresser and have her put in maybe some layers 
some choppy layers just to give it a little bit more body because there's a big difference from when I had this hair in my 20s. I had a lot more of it. <laughs> it was nice and long. I could actually have a ponytail. Yeah, as you age, the thinning, the thinning thing is, it's a thing. Anyways, thin hair and all, this is me. This is where I am. <laughs> so yeah, so I went straight. I'm very, I'm enjoying it. I'm happy. Um, so yeah, my hair will look something like this, up or down from now on. But yeah, so other than that, really, life continues on. Waiting for all these little grandbabies of my friends coming up. So I gotta look at those messages and add my little P's and Q's. I think it's my friend Linda's grand new grandbaby. So congratulations, Linda. <laughs> Maybe she'll bring it to the shop and we can have some snuggles eventually. Uh, but yeah, other than that, I am going to let you all go. And hopefully I'll see you in another couple of weeks and try not to spread it out so far. I'm sure I've missed showing you stuff, but because it's so long, I didn't want this video to be extra, extra long because we know I can chat. But uh, yeah, I will be back soon. If you want to see uh what's going on with me you can go to my i can so make that uh instagram page i'm going to make a concerted effort to actually post more often on there um yeah i'm really bad for that i just live in the moment and i forget and it's like people are like oh i should post that oh okay so i'm gonna be much better that's my goal i have little videos i'm gonna do a little schedule, blah, blah, blah. Anyway, so if you want to see what's going on with me, I'm going to try and uh, just even for my own benefit, take a picture of what I've been working on for that day or every other day and post that um, on that on that Instagram. And it also goes to my Facebook as well. So I can so make that for both Facebook and Instagram. And yeah join me there. Ask any kind of questions. Thank you for joining. Oh, my son and all the other podcasters that I see always say, please hit that like button. <laughs> I feel silly saying it. But anyways, if you do, then it goes out to other people to see all my shenanigans. That's all. I'm not in this for, you know, all that kind of stuff. It's just, it's for fun. I'm enjoying doing this. I was asked multiple times, Where's your podcast? Where's your podcast? Because I kept delaying it. So here you are, my friends. It's out. Well, almost out. I got to edit it. But uh, yeah, everyone take care. Spring is come is upon us soon. Um, so looking forward to that. And yeah, I'll be back in a couple of weeks, I promise. All right. Take care. Bye.